Hello my friends, today we're gonna have a look at a clean code base. Okay, the goal of this video is to show you how a code base that was built with good practices in mind looks like. So let me show you here one screen of our app and we're gonna see how it was built. So here it is, one of the screens of our app and if you still don't have it, check the link down in the description and download it. So what have you got here? This is a quiz app, so we have a question and answers. It is multiplayer, so you can see your partial score and your opponent's partial score. We have a time bar. We only allow you 10 seconds to answer the question. And here you can see a time mark that shows who replied first. So in this case, Neatbot replied first, and then I replied we have an index and which question you are. We have the question and we have potential answers that could be images or text. And of course, when you select something, we have to process that and update the partial score and keep state so we can have a result at the end of the quiz. And we have animations and it should work for every different device size. Okay, there's a lot here on the screen. So I would like you to stop now and think how many lines of code do you think this view controller has? 1000, 500, 300, 200, let's see. So here's our project. Let me search for the question view controller. Here it is, 78 lines of code. How is that possible? Let's have a look. The question view controller has a collection view and everything else is data. For performance reasons, we have to add an image cache and we have a handler when something's selected. And we are using a composition here in our collection view, so we can easily change how the layout looks. And when it's time to reveal the answer, we just send a message to this view controller, so this decision lives outside of the view controller. It doesn't make any decision, it just obeys to the message received. So what is the time bar or the partial score? Let's find out. If I search for progress, view controller, I have my progress bar and I have the mark fields and it's 36 lines long. And where is the score? So we have a different partial result view controller, 41 lines long, plus some extensions that implement some protocols here. Very easy to maintain, but they are all separate and I need to compose all of them together. And to do so, we have a different class called timed question view controller. And look at this, you give it a progress view, a partial results view, a question view, and it combines all of them together. So you may be asking yourself now, who makes the decisions for the view controller to render, who creates this data? So let's have a look at the presenters. So here it is, the timed question presenter with a progress view and a question view. They are just protocols. They're gonna be implemented by the UI elements. So there's nothing here that tells you anything about UI kit. There's nothing here about app kit. There's no UI here, it's only data. And what happens here is that we are mapping an elapsed time that comes from our business logic to a simple float. There's just data that we can pass to the UI so we can render it. And now the question presenter, super tiny as well, that again only maps models to simple data that it's easy for the UI to render on screen. Now who sends messages to the presenters? That's the business logic layer. Let's have a look at it now. So here is the question selection use case that controls when a question is selected. We have a generic type called answer that we actually don't care about what kind of answer you're sending in. It's completely generic, which gives us a lot of flexibility. We have a stopwatch, and in this case it's just a protocol, so we can have different implementations, and that's quite complex to implement if you want it to be hack-free, because users can just jump to the settings and change the time and fool the game. So it's quite important to abstract this complexity from my use case, since it's platform specific and very tied to the operational system. So I don't want the implementation living close to my business logic. So how does it work? Someone is gonna tell the use case that it's time to start, probably when the view did appear is called. We keep tracking until we reach a timeout. But if we get a selection before the timeout, we're gonna pack that answer into a data structure with the time. So again, this is completely generic. And to give more context, 
we separate it in an enum because it could be a given answer or it could be a timeout. So as soon as we receive an answer or it times out, we just tell the presenter to disable the selection, we pack the answer with the stopwatch time, and we delegate it with foreclosure. And that's all. That's all the use case does. Very simple. And we can combine this. As you can see here, there's nothing that says about multiplayer. So how can you play multiplayer if nothing says multiplayer? Well, it's very simple. You just create two instances of this use case and you bind them with different handlers. One for the current device player and one for the other player. That could be an AI or it could be someone over the network sending messages. And when you get to the result, you combine them with a different use case that in our case is the multiplayer timed quiz result use case. And as you can see, it has a player one and player two. And again, it has no idea if it's an AI, if it's someone over the network or Bluetooth or whatever kind of player. I could easily make an AI play against an AI or make this device be just a server where both player one and player two are playing over the internet. And that's quite powerful. So this class composes both players and again, tiny class. And we keep composing and composing them to finally build the entire feature. So it's very easy for us to get rid of time if we want or have a different kind of gameplay where you can play against two players or three players or we want to change the logic of the point system. The UI is completely agnostic about the point system. The presenter is agnostic about the point system. So imagine how powerful this is. You change one place and it just propagates through the composition and through the data structures. So if you are afraid you're going to over-engineer your code base because you're following good practices, this is the proof that if you do it properly, you're actually going to improve the quality and you're going to improve the business value of your application. And you're not going to lose anything. You still have animations, you still use ITO layout, you use storyboards if you want, you use whatever you want in the UI layer. You have no limitations. You have more control. And that's how code bases should be, in my opinion. They should allow you to do whatever you have to do easily. But to get there, you need to learn a lot of different ways of doing things. So don't forget to subscribe. Go to our website. The link is in the description. Sign up to our newsletter. Be part of our community. And let's together build up those skills. Let's take control over our code bases. And let's allow our apps to be the best they can be. Because I really believe it's in our hands, developers. It's our responsibility. And it is possible. And every time someone says that this is too much, this doesn't matter, just remember that maybe they are dealing with a different problem than you are. And as you saw with today, the result looks quite simple. And that's the beauty of simplicity. But again, it might be hard to get there, but it's worth it. And that's going to increase so much the value of the work you produce. So I hope this video gives you some nice incentive. And I hope to see you here again. So subscribe to our channel and I see you next time. Mm -hmm.